Yo, we back, man. Good Hennessy show. And as you can t see right here in the middle, the one and only, the video is so fitting, too. Famous. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sean Fallon, how you doing, brother? What's up? What's up, fellas? I'm doing great. How y'all? Welcome to the Good Hennessy show. I appreciate, sure. appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for letting me come through. Oh, man. All good, Chop bro. Chopping up with y'all. Yeah, man. I, I, you know, it's, it's um, what do I want to start? I want to start where I first heard, like, your music, right? Uh, it was during the time, and, and this is crazy, though, because you're going to know this this the, the same time. You remember the Grammy night we was um, uh, at Playboy Trey Crib recording. Mm -hmm. And so from that point, you know what I'm saying? So it was like from, it was around that same time. I can't remember what year that was, but it was the, it was the year that Paper Trail was up for, like, the Grammys and everything like that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, just researching and, you know, it was like, you know, looking up Playboy Trey stuff. I was like, man, who is this Sean Fallon dude? Like, you know what I'm saying? Because I think y'all had like a record together or something yeah, at the time. Wonderful Life. Yeah, one, that's it. Right. The Wonderful Life record. So just, um, you know, doing doing my due diligence, doing the research, and I see him, and then I come across like the uh, Be Everywhere project and this whole campaign. I'm like, man, what is this dude talking about? He be everywhere. <laughs> and this was like before like Instagram was like, you know, Instagram wasn't really thought days. about. Yeah, this Twitter. was like all Twitter. So you couldn't really see it. Right. You know what I mean? And then next thing you know like instagram hit and then you just like yo this dude here is like really everywhere like <laughs> literally so i, I want to start there man like what's up with this sean fallion be everywhere like what did this campaign start how did it start all of that sean fallion be everywhere um the campaign really started well the person who coined the phrase was my homie Corey mo shout out to Corey mo producer rapper dj out of houston he don't work with everybody when he mm -hmm. first moved to atlanta I kept running into him in a bunch of different places, like from the bougie shit to the, you know, the hood to hmm. like anything you can name in like one week. <laughs> and crazy. he was like, like I think maybe like after the fifth or sixth time I saw him, he was like, that damn Sean Fallon be everywhere. <laughs> and I said, yo, I'm, I'm using that. He was like, man, go ahead. So I just ran with, I literally was like, yo, I'm, after I told him I'm using it, I was looking for a name for my project. It was like my first real solo project. I mm -hmm. did an EP prior, but not like a full length. Okay. And I was like, yo, I'm going to use that. And I really had just, well, I was traveling a lot. And I moved around a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. But it became more more of a, you know, like my mantra. Because that's already what I, what I live by. I want it to be everywhere if I'm not there. You're talking about me. Gotcha. I'm talking about right. something I did, I did if I'm, you know, if I'm not there in the physical. And if I, and I did want to be there in the physical. I want to travel. I want to, you know, touch different places that... A lot of people don't get to get to touch, but touch them in, in my way. Mm. You know, a lot of rappers go to different places in different cities, and they, they stay on the tour bus, they stay in the hotel room, they go to the mall, buy sneakers. <laughs> I'm in your hood. I go to where the pop and food spot is. I hang out with the people. You know, like, not on no, you know, how rappers be like, yeah, yeah. I'm in the hood, I'm nigga. Like, no, nah, yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah. I'm in the hood. I'm in the hood with good people. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? I'm like, glad you cleared that yeah, up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah, I ain't for the nonsense, but yeah. I go and actually experience these places, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's funny, like, my homie back in the day called me the black Anthony Bourdain, the hip hop Anthony <laughs> Bourdain, uh, when I did a show in Chicago. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty dope. You yeah. know what I mean? Because I, I would definitely watch Anthony Bourdain show. Right. So, you know, just it's all about just really being everywhere, just leaving my presence and uh, my, my imprint on everything I do. You know what I'm saying? Word, word. And you, you say you, you from Philly. We heard that West, earlier. West mm -hmm. Philly. You know what I'm saying? West Philly, definitely. Yeah. West Philly, the best yeah, Philly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> got you, got you. What, what got you down here to the, to the dirty, man? Man, opportunity. I, yeah. um, I love home, man, but, you know, some things – Stifle you at home, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Gotcha. Like a lot of my friends either was doing good or they was doing bad. And when I mean, you know, bad, they was doing prison bad and mm -hmm. doing good as, you know, family, regular, you know, working and stuff. And, right. you know, I just didn't really see any any uh, real opportunity at the time for me. You know, I was, you know, raised right. But, like, you know, it's, it's funny now because, like, my, my mom was a cop since 94. Mm -hmm. And my cousin might have, he was, like, one of the biggest drug dealers in North Philly. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it was like, it's like seeing seeing different sides of, of life, you know. I didn't really see where anything was going to go for me mm -hmm. at home for, for a period of time. I love seeing my family. I love seeing my friends. But um, I was, I was I got to visit Atlanta. My father had moved down here. Okay. And I came to visit him in 2002 mm -hmm. and lost my mind. You know, because, mm -hmm. like, for, for, it's funny. It's like us up, outside of here, you know, unless you travel a lot, 
TV makes this seem bigger than life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like a lot of these sure. places seem bigger than life. Right. So, you know, I got down here and I was on the, on the you know, BET on Cut Wave, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm down here living it up. My first my first experience in Atlanta, I was running with uh with Baby D. You know what okay. I'm saying? Oh, man. Baby D, Big Lil C. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, you know, and, um, you know, shout out to DJ Jelly and Voodoo. They put me on. Like, I was running around with them, and I'm in a, in a club on a couch standing next to Mike Vick, and mm. you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm calling back home, like, yo, I'm moving. You right. know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I lost my mind. So it got me down here, and then, you know, just – after coming down to visit like two more times, I really was like, yo, I'm moving. Right. I got here, realized that everything that glitters ain't go when it comes mm-hmm. to the party and in the clubbing, and you actually really got to work and do some do things to maintain and, uh, you know, some state of cool living. So I got I got on that wave, and I made some great relationships and just kept it moving, you know what I'm saying, and stayed here, you know. That's dope. Man, you, you said a lot of stuff right there, man, and, and I don't know if people caught it, but, like, I'm big on that, like just making stuff happen. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you, you said, like y- your situation in Philly was was a cool situation, but the people around you were just really like, we just said what it like. They just weren't doing what you wanted to do yeah. at the end of the day, and it's like you know I got to make a way, and like to literally like make that move. Like Philly ain't no, you know that ain't no quick trip down here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That ain't like <laughs> good twelve. Yeah, that you know what I'm saying? Like, so to like just up and say like, man, I'm just gonna come down here just on the whim and just like make it happen. You know what I mean? I yeah. I think that says a lot about your character. Um, you know, we talked about the the, the being everywhere. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and this is a very vague question, but I, I always wanted to ask like, how? How do you make that happen? Man, out of necessity, man. You know, it, I always feel like everything I do, well, music was being one of the one of the first things. Well, actually. Just to backtrack a little bit, what got me down here wasn't even music. I was doing clothing. Mm-hmm. So I was doing custom clothing for a lot of artists. I was in school doing a lot of custom work for different people, like entertainment companies down here too. So gotcha. that trip down here, you know, I was that, already kind of tied in. No, that actually wasn't Soupy. It was a com- company called Abstract Collection. Okay, okay. And I was doing like the custom, it was like the Muskeen style stuff. Okay. Muskeen had reached out, the original owners of Muskeen had reached out to me before I wanted to hire me, but I was just doing my thing on my own. Gotcha. Making money. Like if back in the day, Baby D, his first appearance in the source, he had one of my shirts on. Dope. Bone Crusher had one of my shirts on in Sierra Goody's video. Um, Ludacris, I did stuff with Ludacris, DJ JC, uh, Lil John, Esau Boys. They they wore my stuff a lot. Yo, so, what's the name of the abstract collection? I oh. know you. There was another one that that Big Oomp and them used to wear called by this dude named Lil C. No, uh, no, abstract. Yeah. Were they ever down in Miami at one point? Uh we didn't. We didn't. We weren't based out of there, but we did. I did stuff for Pitbull for. Um, Man, yeah, I did. A, it was funny thing is, I did a shirt for Pitbull. I put the Puerto Rican flag on there. Cause I was high one night. I put the Puerto Rican flag on, and I ran into him at the "What You Gonna Do" video shoot, and we just was laughing about the shit. He's like, "Yeah, man, I got that shirt, man." He was like, "He was like, uh, you sent the wrong flag, though." I was like, "I know, man." I was like, the other one's in the mail, though. Man. Dude, yeah. all jokes aside, like, like for it, do you know a dude named Greg? DJ uh, Greg G. Was it Greg G? Cause abstract, like I, I remember abstract for some reason, like, but I knew this dude named Greg that used to be involved with it, and I don't know if these are the same companies or not, but it was the it, same type. There of- was another abstract collection I found out maybe like two, three years after I started. Okay, and it was like they were like out of DC, I think. But it was totally different than what I was doing. I have to talk to you um, off camera, man, because I got like a Charlie Brown hat that I got in college that the, the dude Greg he put, he put the paint stuff on. Yeah, it. man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> might, <laughs> might just, I did. I did run into a couple people like just blatantly stole my stuff, and yeah. I had to like you know reach out on some, uh, you know, some other business. But um, it was a DJ that was down with Desert Storm DJs out, mm. in, out of Orlando that used to wear my stuff all the time. I used to I had DJ Envy wear my stuff on Rap City. DJ mm. Active, that's. Mm. You know, he about to, he's on tour with Janet Jackson. Like, I, I had mad people wearing myself. But that's what got me here. So when I got down here, I got into music because of Bone Crusher. Mm. So, you know, I was already rapping. I've been rapping since I was 13. I just, I, I saw people getting signed when I was in high school mm. and yeah. was like, shit ain't going over. Ain't nobody making money <laughs> still with me. Right, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I, you, you, had, like I had people that I knew that was getting signed. Asking me, can I put them on? Thinking I so dope, like no, nah. <laughs> like no, nah, I just work, man. I got a job, yeah. so you know, I, I I didn't really want to take rap serious. And then when I got down here and I was in the studio with Crusher, like every day, it was just, he was, he was like, man, you rap right, yeah. And like literally from that day on, like when he was working on it, supposed to be working on the second album. I wound up, you know, doing a couple records with him, Cuddy Car, you know, Cuddy from Jim Crow, mm-hmm. and um, 
a couple other people, man, like the homie, I think Craig Love was in there. I think Lil John came in there one time, and then um, uh, the homie um, L Rock. I just did a bunch of records with him, and then you know Sean it came. It came to Sean comes to Sean Sean Fallon thing. You know what I mean? And started touring with him, and you know he put me in the game. So man, you got a lot of history, man. <laughs> man, yeah, y'all ain't got enough time for this for the stories <laughs> I got, brother. Yeah, got a lot of history, man. A lot of history. For real. Um, so there's. I mentioned it um, briefly. I don't know if people called it, but the Soupy Jones. I, yeah. I remember that. Um, man, you do a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> and I was thinking about this prior to this interview. Like, man, how are we going to include all this stuff in a short period of time? So mm-hmm. we got the, the Soupy Jones for people that don't know. Kind of give them that that little quick, brief history of that. Soupy Jones is a, is a graphic T line that I have. I've um, I've had it around for a while. It's been like, you know, I bring it. I brought it out back maybe like 2000 six or so or something like that uh, whenever uh the pack if you remember like young l Lil b all of them mm. oh yeah, yeah they yeah. had the song vans like that like if you look on their first promo pictures young l got my soupy jones shirt on mm. which oddly enough looks like pink dolphin but then i ain't gonna get into that yeah it's <laughs> um, a whole other conversation yeah, right so yeah yeah but um so uh, yeah, I've been doing it for a while, man. I had, a, I had a bunch of people wearing it and stuff, and it's just it's just like it's like a baby that I don't want to see yeah. fall fall gotcha. the wrong way. I got you. So it's like you know it's, it's kind of it's here and it's not here. But yeah. when it comes when it comes back out, everybody's gonna be you know like I still got people hitting me up every day trying to buy. It. Like we got product. It's just it got to be right. You know I what I'm saying? You. you know it's 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 coming. So it's funny because when I first started doing music here in Atlanta. A lot of people used to think my name was Soupy Jones, so they would put my <laughs> Soupy Jones on all the like the show flyers. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And I used to have to, to call them, like, yo, 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 that's not it, man. <laughs> Take it down. You got that's change a dope the flyer. name though. Like, it's dope. Real, I mean, yeah. I, I still like it's the brand. Like the brand. Yeah, it's just some cool shit. It's like so I can't, but I don't want you know what I do as Sean Fallon right to affect the brand negatively. Mm-hmm. You know, what I got mean? you. So, I got you. You know, but yeah, Subi Jones is around, man. You know, Subi Jones clothing co on uh, Instagram. We got a, we got a few things up there you can see from the from the line. And, yeah, I was just about to ask, was it a yeah, way outside of song? Subi Jones clothing co on Instagram. We building the site back out, and we gonna put some more product out there. Yeah, you know, I got a lot of things. I got my hands in a lot, man. You know. Yeah, I'm I'm looking I'm looking <laughs> at the Instagram right here, and I'm uh, just yeah. gonna like. <laughs> throw a couple of things out there so okay. we know about the uh it well i'll put it like this if you're in atlanta you don't know about spin wednesdays then you're not in atlanta because i swear <laughs> like everywhere it's like okay spin wednesdays I, i've definitely come through a couple of times yeah. man and just like I just the vibe that. no it's all good man yeah. it's just it's cool vibes man like good people spin got some good food them wings that hennessy was you know turning up on yeah them. Those, those, those spin wings <laughs> right now so you know uh, you, you got that. That's every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, man. We've been rocking since 2013, 2012. 2012. 2012. Yeah, you yeah. got that. Then you got the uh, all vinyl everything, yep. which, believe it or not, I have yet to man, make it. July it's on, 26 is the next one. It's on Sundays, yeah. that, and like I'm always like with family, okay. so it's kind of hard for me to make bring it. Bring the family. Like, I know. I, I got to make it. Yeah. I love vinyl. Like Vinyl yeah. is my thing, so okay. it's like why I haven't been out there yet, I don't know. I got I to gotta make it happen, though. Mm-hmm. And then I see this Get Brunch pop up, like, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that, too. So Get Brunch, man, we've, yeah. been, we've been working on it for about a year. Um, like I said, when it comes to any of these things, like, my page is building brands, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, I'm big on what my name is attached to, and it got to be right, you know what I'm saying? So we've had instances where we were going to put Get Brunch out, and then deals fell through with different venues and stuff, and, you know, we just had to go back to the drawing board, you know what I mean, and, and, and put it out the right way. So we had the opportunity to start it with BQE here off of Edgewood, and we, we are on our third one in, and it's been nothing but a success. And, you know, people just been coming out and showing love. You know, everybody loves brunch. I travel a lot, so it's a lot of different cities that do good brunch events. Mm-hmm. And I feel like Atlanta hasn't really, cal- you know, uh, executed one uh, yet. So mm-hmm. until we, you know, started, you know what I mean, because it's like – you got a lot of different people that do the brunch thing, but it's like, do you really want to be at it? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, you want to get some good food, you want to hear some good music, and possibly run into somebody that could possibly change your life or your career. Right. Come get brunch. You know. Right. It's just simple, man. Yeah. When, yeah. when do when do these things take place to, to get brunch? Get brunch is every Saturday from 11 to 5 p. 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at uh, BQE 262 Edgewood Avenue. Okay. Spend Wednesdays is at Spend 259 Peter Street uh, every Wednesday night. All vinyl, everything. The next one is July 26th at Noni's on Edgewood, 357 Edgewood. 
And uh, we do all vinyl up until September. And then, you know, for the people that have been following the brand and really support us, man, we connected with One Music Fest, and we'll actually have a stage at One Music Fest dope, September dope. 12th for all vinyl, everything. Dope, dope. Yeah. Hennessy, you got something up that you just, you were just on something just then. Oh, that's that's What's another that? business. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I do, I do I do branding all around, man. <laughs> he pulled up my graphic. Oh yeah, graphics, if you on man. if you on Instagram, Spoon Graphics is G R A P I X. Yeah, I also do graphic design, branding, all that. Like multiple streams of income, man. You know, we grew up in an age where people thought that if you was a rapper, you couldn't be nothing else, mm. or it wasn't cool to be something else. You know what I mean? Like. When I when when I was going as hard super hard with the music, I was doing everything. I was managing myself, doing my design. Sometimes I edit my videos, you know, book my shows, all that. You know, what I mean, mix my records. <laughs> so you know, it's like you do stuff out of necessity. Yeah. And you know, I come in a lot of artists that don't want to work. You know, and they compl- They say they working, and you know, a lot of these rappers be hashtag working, and that's just common. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. A lot of these rappers hashtag work. We work Dude, for, that is, work that's, for real. We're, we're taking that. That's I'm like, about, yeah, man, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Like, that's, hashtag you know, working. It's cool, it's cool to hashtag, no, but you like, you know, any, I tell people, you hit hit one of my hashtags and you'll see that work. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, my work is tangible. You know what I mean? It's cool to, to post and tweet and tell your friend, hey, your friends like, and, you know, I got like, what, like 8,000 followers and mm. that don't even mean shit. You know mm. what I'm saying? Like, I work and my work, and my, my, my network is probably only like 2,000 or 3,000 of those people that I actually circulate bread with. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be seeing people with 100K, 20K, and I'm like, nobody knows you. Right. There's yeah, a problem. Right. There's you know what problem. I mean? A lot of these artists don't understand that. Man, I, I've, I've said this before, man. It's like on some... I don't know what we got. We got a, a, a drag race. Yeah, we got man, a drag know, race. Turn right up about it. Like, yeah, look, you know, we right on Peter's show. show. Yeah, yeah, telling yeah, you, man. That's how it go. But look, man, we got a. Uh, I, w- I was telling telling this to somebody, mm-hmm. or maybe I just said it on Twitter or something. But you know, I was like, man, if social media went away tomorrow, would you still be relevant? You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like a lot of people. It's just like what you say. It's that hashtag. It's like oh, we so quick to just put stuff out there and make it look good. But it's like, yeah, you take all that away, like. Do people know your name in the streets? Are you really out there touching the people? And you know that that type to, of to thing. quote Big Boy, perception is deception and it's depressing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, you can't come on the show with no outcast quotes. Hey, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna be honest, man. It's like you know, social media has helped me tremendously. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I know, I know the difference between real life and social media. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And like, I'm not one of the people that's like, oh, that's not real life. Like, no, I put up stuff on social media that is my real life. People got it because I know certain people relate to my real life. You know what I'm saying? But I also know that, you know, all these likes don't equate to people really supporting shit. Mm, right, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, you know, I put up, it's just like you put up, I put up a, uh, the the design thing, you know, and I still got people hitting me up like, hey, man, yo, you know where I can get graphic work from? You know what I mean? <laughs> but you just like the picture. Right. Yeah, people, yeah, yeah. You, know, you know, shout out to all my people on my Instagram, but I know y'all don't read. Y'all just like the pretty colors. Yeah, just like the right, colors. Right. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> real. Yeah, just like pretty colors and pushing that button. But, um, yeah, man, you know, it's like you got to be able to move around. And one thing that I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I felt I was naive to the fact that people, I, I always feel like nobody knows me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter how much people are like, oh, man, Sean Fagan be everywhere. Oh, that's that's a good dude, whatever. I still feel like nobody knows me. I wake up every morning. And He's a humble like, fellow. Ladies you know, and I mean, <laughs> and I have I got a record that says, says fuck being humble. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's just like I just I, I wake up and I work like that because nobody owe you shit. Mm. And, and, you know, if you go through life like that, you're going to work. You're going to feel you need to work out of necessity. But it does feel good to move and travel and go to these different places. And somebody run up on you like, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I. I've been stopped in the airport in Houston for a CD. I've been stopped just having somebody say, hey, man, don't you do all vinyl everything? I've had world touring DJs stop me and say, hey, man, I want to get down to Atlanta to spin at your event. That's so, dope, you man. know, and that didn't, that, all of that didn't come from just Instagram. Mm-hmm. That came from me moving around and being a solid person. So, you know, a lot of people don't understand they still got to do that, you know. It's cool to have cool music and be the, the weird <laughs> guy with the, the black and white pictures and the Tupac caption and, you know what I'm saying, like, just have pictures that don't match your captions and shit and act like you just a super cool dude that drinks lean and shit like that. But, you know, and, rea- and when reality strikes, you'll, Gotta work, you'll be man. sitting in that room by yourself. Absolutely, so, man. Right. What else we got, man? Man, uh, I just wanted to real quick touch on this this project right here. Oh, man. IDSBIC, man. Yeah. I put what? that out at the end of last year, man. Okay. And, it's, I mean, it's still rolling, actually. Yeah. Um, IDSBIC is I don't speak because I can. Okay. Basically means that, you know, you need to listen when I'm talking. 
You know, I just, uh, you know, you don't, you know how they say, but what your parents used to say, I'm not speaking for my health. You know, mm-hmm. and it just was like me just really talking about shit that was going on with me in my life because a lot of people see the Instagram, see the party, but they ain't. But you know, with me, I had to write music off of what I'm really going through, whether it be the partying and the bad shit. Right. So this was just more of a, you know, just like a little, kind of like a quick EP, but story of some things that I dealt with that I was just going through, and I wanted to to get out there, and I just needed people to listen because I know other people will be going was going through the same shit. So. Yeah. And I, I can tell because I was listening today at the uh, at the job. Mm-hmm. I let that thing play through it. it it's a, I don't know if you heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You heard it. Yeah, I'm just not getting on it, but I can tell you, it, it was a good project to me because it was over it. before I knew it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I said. I was just stuck there with the headphones on, but it was one song in particular in the hook. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know the name of the song, but you were. I want to say. Is it speaking in third person when you kind of speaking about yourself? But you're the one saying it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's the wrong <laughs> okay. term. Uh, um, you was in the hook. You was somebody else, but you was yourself. But you was somebody else in the hook. Oh man, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, talking about what? I need it's to like number three or number four. Uh, is it uh, ticking? Time ticking down, like we running out. I don't know. I'm trying man. to think which one you talking about now, Henderson. You play it. <laughs> yeah. Play yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we'll have to, cause I just let it. I just let it roll through. Well, you, go to, go to, yeah, or that or a band camp or the SoundCloud, whatever. Right. Well, it's probably band camp up there. That this one, right this there. One. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. We gonna find that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, anyway, mm-hmm. the joint was dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said all that to say that. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate. it. I said all that to say that <laughs> for sure. No, it's all good, man. I, 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 um, something I did want to talk about. I haven't seen it in a while though. Um, but you know, kind of the same way I found you was with uh, Playboy Trey. Y'all was doing the Red Cup party. Yeah. Are y'all bringing that back? Anytime yeah, we definitely bringing it back, man. Uh, you know, Playboy Trey. That's my brother. Like, man, I don't even think if we were really blood, we could be any closer. But mm-hmm. that's that's the big homie right there. And um, you know, Red Cup party, man. Just like when even when I did Sean Fallon and Friends, it was more out of like we traveled a lot at the same time or mm-hmm. different times, so we couldn't really get right get back on the pay, same page to have the event because he was going out and you know I gotcha. was going out. But uh, we we always talk about because we want, we want to bring it back soon because there's so much talent in the city that we feel like gets overlooked and we love to put them you know on the stage. I mean I feel like we have enough visibility to do some things. But you know also with that being said, a lot of artists you get them that alley oop and they just kind of treat it like they already on. But yeah, you know we just want to have a dope show. You know what I'm saying? And the Red Cup party was that, so we definitely got to bring it back, man. At the end of the day, me and Playboy Trey, we just like to have a good time and listen and create dope music. You know what I'm saying? So Red Cup party definitely gave a gave a, a lot of dudes a, a vehicle to be in front of some audi- audience that they never you know would have had the opportunity to. And shout out to the, a lot of the dudes that supported us from day one, like. Big Crit, Ritz, Scotty ATL, mm-hmm. uh, man, shoot, B.O.B., man, everybody that came through. My homie Tef Poe out of St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Man, you know, just a lot of people held us down, so we definitely bringing the Red Cup party back. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, I know you got to go. Oh. I know you got to get got to get out of here. Um, but before you leave, I don't know if Hennessy found that record, but you said St. Louis, I and I thought play about it loud. Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I do. I, I got to talk, talk about St. Louis a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can tell. I don't want to take up my homeboy time over yeah. there, man. But I, I, we can talk about St. Louis. You found you found it. Yeah. I, I want to play it out loud. But okay. I didn't want to get in when y'all was talking. I was talking. <laughs> but, uh, you talking about this ticket? Yeah. Okay, play. You talking about this, nah, this nah, is a record though? Nah, this oh, okay. ain't it. This ain't it. Well. But yeah, go ahead. The St. Louis joint uh, um, with Indiana Rome, like the work that you're doing with him, I've been noticing that the man, moves that are being made on that end. So I'm going to just say this right now, man. My favorite artist is Indiana Rome right now. Mm. And Dope not because I'm working with him, but like that dude. I met Indiana Rome about five years ago at a show. Was, I was He was opening up for me and my homie Vandalism in St. Louis. And I was watching like, yo, who is this dude? And he was like, oh, this young dude, Rome. And I was like, yo, this beat is crazy. This song is crazy. He was like, yeah, he produced it too. I was like, what? <laughs> so, you know, we got cool. And I, and I had reached back out to him for a project I did called December for a record. And, you know, I was like, yo, I want you to be on it too. So I wound up being on the record, shooting a video in, in St. Louis. And we've, you know, been friends ever since. And, like, man, he was just playing me songs. And I'm sitting there like, everybody says I, my hustle is crazy. But, like, his work ethic making music mm-hmm. trumps my work ethic, like, moving music. Mm. And I'm and I'm like, yo, just watching this dude. Like every time he sends me records, I'm like, damn. 
Like, yo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we have the best problem in the world. It's like we got all the music and yeah. then we got to get visuals and, you know what I'm saying? But, like, his, he put out a um, – he had a, a project last year that came out called Dope Dealer. It was the first one. Mm-hmm. And I heard it in, in t- it's in its entirety. And I called him. I said, yo, this is crazy. Like, yo, what – what? he was like, man, you know, I want to put it out this time. And, you know, I was arguing with him. Like, yo, you got to hold on. You got to hold on. <laughs> but we wound up dropping it. You know, people showed the love and – you know, we started the Dope Dealers movement, man, and it's like, you know, everybody here Dope Dealer, but I'm, we taking it back to the, you know, the old old way of, you know, just doing dope shit. You know, yeah. if you if you feeding the homeless or clothing the homeless, yeah. you're doing dope shit, you're doing this radio show, you're doing some dope shit, man. We putting dope shit back out into the world, and, and you know, like, instead of the negative thing and how, like, you know, it's cool to, it's cool to get your, you know, you get your little high on and all that stuff, but I feel like I've always been a dealer. I ain't been a user, you know mm. what I'm saying? So... I feel like rap is changing. We want to keep. We, we don't want. We we want to progress. We don't want to change for the worse. So, you know that's what the dope dealers are. So I've been helping Rome. You know push his push his work. And uh, he got dope dealer two coming out. Uh, we had the Master P record out. We got a record out right now hmm. called Whoa Whoa. He oh, had, yeah. um You know he got man. He just got music that is ridiculous. So I'm gonna just say this right now. If you don't know who Indiana Rome is, you have to. <laughs> Would Indiana Rome sign a 360 deal? Nah. <laughs> I wouldn't let him. I good answer, man. Please, good answer. Hey, if you would have said that. something else, I would have had to talk to you. We did too camera, much. Man. But see, the <laughs> thing is about this, and I said this before in an interview a while ago, 360 deal is only bad for somebody who doesn't understand it. Absolutely. So if you sign it knowing that the 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 reason is to get a certain amount of funding and push to do something, then it could work in your favor. Because a lot of, like, I mean, uh, Irv Gotti said this a long time ago in an interview, like, People be complaining about giving up fifty percent of zero. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like you sign up with a bank if you sign a deal. Period. That's what it is. Yeah. With so a bank. yeah. So you gotta you gotta understand what you're doing. It's like when you go to buy a car, it really doesn't make sense to buy a car because it's going to depreciate. Absolutely. But your but your but your talent, your career is not going to depreciate unless you let it. So right, right. You know, I mean, I would I wouldn't let them do that because I feel like we did we doing so much groundwork. You know, as far as just building the brand out, even outside of the music. That I felt like we worth more than that, you Absolutely. know. And he got way more, he, you know. He got more years ahead of making dope music. And then, you know, when I feel like putting something else out, then you know, it's power in numbers. So. There you go, man. Great answer, man. Yeah. Uh, gr- gr- great answer. Appreciate great answer. answer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, look, man, I know you got to get out of here, bro. So, um, how can first off, is there anything else you want to say to the people before you leave? First off, oh uh, man, um, yeah, I'm still rapping. For a lot of people that don't know him, <laughs> I, I'm just, I just ain't been inspired to finish up these records but i do got a project called pray before you eat coming out soon so just pay attention for that and um indiana rome dope dealer it's dope dealer too and follow follow the movement hashtag dope dlrs and if you want to get down with us we got some uh merchandise as well dope dlrs dot com. you can find me seanfallion.com follow all the brands get brunch all vinyl everything spin wednesdays uh we have an event called snap a die that we bring it back too and um, shout out to my business partner DJ DBIC, uh, Coalition DJs, Big Chris DJ. You know we just we out here working, man. Shout out to the Good Hennessy Show, man. Straight out of Den dot com. Everybody that been supporting, man. And is, is this the record right here? Is this? The, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna find this record out. I just yeah. wanna see. Yeah, I want to yeah. know what record it is, <laughs> yeah, so I can I, so I can talk about that, and I'll close out on you. Hey, I tell you what, <laughs> follow us on Periscope. I'm gonna put up a Periscope immediately following this. We are gonna figure out what we that record, out is, record is. Yeah, man. But look, yeah. we go. Uh, we got the homie No Sir Foster coming up next. Shout out to him, man. Yeah. Shout out to Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, sure. Definitely, definitely, yeah. man. So uh, look, we're gonna be right back on the Good Hennessy Show. Um, no Sir Foster. Can we go into that video, the No Sir video? Yeah, we're gonna be be back in a second, man. Good Hennessy Show. Peace. Yeah.